Hi folks, co-tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. Hi folks, welcome to the newest edition of uh, Ask Co-Tutor. Some times back I had asked you guys to post some questions on Co-Tutor community page and uh, you have posted some questions. So I will basically go through these questions and hopefully uh, you'll be able to answer the doubts that you had posted or some of the questions that you had posted so let's go through the first question uh, it basically says what is the architecture that you would recommend and how would you do it for uh, compose do you have any plan to make videos for compose uh, multi-platform uh, i would say that uh, if you are working with compose you can still follow the the standard mbvm architecture that android uh, recommends or what they call it as bias recommended architecture framework for android which is basically a mevm architecture i have already covered mevm architecture in one of the older series but of course i have done it using java but fundamentals don't change so it is still a uh, mevm and here the view instead of the xml layout you would be using the composable that's the only difference and then the old ways of working with the view model repository design pattern uh, along with uh, the latest things that jetpack has introduced with respect to navigation that is jetpack navigation would definitely be useful of course uh, you will have to adhere to the uh, solid fundamentals uh, clean code architecture if you want to really achieve unidirectional uh, data flow in the application of course uh, needless to say that uh, to achieve a proper solid principle architecture you have to once again start using things like some of the dependency injection tools like hilt dagger and if i am not wrong uh, in kotlin world coin has been gaining a lot of prominence so yeah i would say that uh, you would still follow mevm architecture with uh, these combinations so that's what my answer is the next question is are most companies adopting jetpack compose uh, especially in india and if possible please share any article survey or thoughts from your experience uh, use of flutter versus compose in uh, new companies let me put it this way right now the jetpack compose uh, has already been in usage for quite some time i think if not i am wrong it's definitely more than two year old the jetpack compose or probably even more than that and a lot of new applications native android mobile applications that get developed they get developed using the jetpack compose uh, people don't go back to the old ways of working which is uh, xml based and there is a reason and i have seen that this is a trend uh, in the front-end application development uh, even if you think in terms of the website development uh, it used to be uh, html css and then integrating with the javascript so it was a combination of declarative and functional programming but now with the react uh, angular or uh, all these front-end javascript frameworks it is functional programming which is enabling them to do a lot of reactive programming and that has been a paradigm shift I'm seeing this not only in Android with the composables, React programming is nothing but that. Flutter programming also is influenced by that. Even Apple iOS development now uses uh, something similar to composable to do its native iOS development. So I would say that to a great extent, uh, world has started moving towards this kind of approach towards uh, developing the UI. and. Uh, the main reason why it is happening is because of the functional programming and which enables you to do the reactive uh, development. But uh, still there are a lot of applications which were developed before three years or four years. So that is a lot of legacy code. But I would say what is the typical shelf life of a mobile application? Industry standard is around three years, three, four years if you are five years old mobile application uh, you are really stretching it more often than not after five years you basically kill the application and try to recreate the application from scratch to basically leverage all the latest features and the capabilities of the os upgrades 
So if you still have a mobile applications code base, which is more than five year old in native Android, most likely it will be XML based and not Jetpack Compose based. And uh, it might be even Java until and unless you have adopted Kotlin very early on. If you had already adopted Kotlin very early on, then migrating to Jetpack Compose is much more easier. Uh, but however, if your code base is still Java based, then moving it to Kotlin and then moving it to Jetpack Compose will be some effort. And that effort comes at a cost because you have to pay the developers. Companies, businesses are willing to invest in that only if they feel that whatever the investment that they are going to do to do this transition or migration from the old code base to the latest Kotlin Jetpack Compose the code base, only if they think that they are going to make money out of it. Otherwise, I don't think they are going to invest money on it. So I would say it depends mainly by the business, whether business wise it makes sense. If it makes sense, you want to basically upgrade the application because it is a killer application and it would be futile to lose that particular application because you are basically accumulating lot of technical debt, then companies will definitely say, that doesn't matter, let's upgrade to the latest framework and rebuild the application. Otherwise, companies will continue to use the same old code base or they will try to upgrade it in a very phased manner over a period of time. But it all depends upon how much money can it make. Unfortunately or fortunately, it's always the money that determines whether the migration will happen or not. Another question that you had asked was uh, use of Flutter versus Compose in the new companies. Comparing Flutter with Compose is not a right comparison because Flutter is a cross-platform and uh, the best way to compare it against is to compare it with React Native. Uh, they are competing frameworks, but Flutter and Composables are not an apple to apple comparison. And when it comes to Flutter and React Native, I think uh, React Native has a slight edge because the easily available pool of the JavaScript developers compared to Dart, uh, which is used by the Flutter. Learning a new programming language and then mastering a framework or a platform based on that new programming language takes longer time rather than moving into a direction of a framework which already leverages something which you already know, uh, for example, JavaScript. So that has been the advantage with React Native framework or platform. That is the reason why you will find more React Native developers than Flutter developers. I don't know in recent times what has been the situation, but at least uh, in the organizations that I have seen, uh, it is mostly React Native, uh, at least in India. And another advantage is a lot of React web developers can easily transition to uh, React Native development, mobile development. So uh, as a, a portfolio of a front-end developer, uh, just to broaden your horizon, moving from React web to React Native is much more easier than say React web to Flutter. The next question that has been asked is, I know Android with Java, now I am working as a Flutter developer. Should I learn Android development with Kotlin? Any suggestions, please? I think since you already know Android with Java, uh, learning Kotlin and learning Android development with Kotlin should not be a major, uh, what you say, no? difficulty. You should be able to transition it very quickly, regardless of what you are doing as your uh, professional daily coding which is probably Flutter, as you said. Master Flutter, uh, but I would suggest don't lose out on upgrading yourself with Kotlin development for Android. Uh, it always helps and it always helps to be able to do native Android development using Kotlin, which is the main thing that basically Android is trying to drive. So yeah, I would say that's what my answer is. The next one is a little bit technical question. Why use context. It's a very big question. I would say in Android, context is basically the main object which holds all the information about the application. If at all you want to fetch any system information about the application during the runtime, the only easy place to do that is through context. And that is why you use a uh, context. I have explained context, what is the use of context, what are different types of context, why you have to be a little bit careful 
while using context why it leads to memory leak everything in a separate series i am going to give you a link to that particular video series so i suggest you go through that and uh, i think that will explain a lot of things uh, which are beyond the scope of this particular video because it's quite a detailed video series which explains a lot of things associated with the context so that is about the context the next question is why are we using launched effect basically side effect when to use side effect okay broadly speaking that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye